fuck. I, I, I know you have something that you want to talk about, but, um, well, I'll, I'll wait till the meat of the show to get to it. Yeah. Um, just put in your craw if we get to it, man. I'm just so, I'm, I'm so effing pissed off with Governor DC. What's that? Why is that? Governor DC. I, I, I'm just so done. Mm. I, I, I am just, yeah. at, I'm just at that point where it's just like, dude must not have any kids because he has no balls. He has no ability to produce semen at this point because he, I mean, he has to have nothing but the GI Joe nether regions where it's just a smooth bump of plastic down there. Cause dude has no balls, no cojones, no nothing. The only orifice on his body that works is his lips attached to the establishment. Nothing more. He just can't do it. He just can't. Do yeah. It. Yeah. Well, I, I vaguely heard about what happened. Um, yeah, yeah. So basically, on Wednesday, he had a he had a press conference, right, to talk about the Corona numbers and yeah, his first press conference basically in twenty days, and basically didn't say anything, right? He basically was like, "Masks work," but I'm not doing a state mandate, and uh, have a good day. No, he said a lot. He said <laughs> he he said he said he said a lot. He said, "Did he say a lot?" But then, like, not a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, he said a lot. Of nothing is what my grandmother would say. My grandmother would say, you said a lot of nothing. And the yeah. overall takeaway is, is that he is doing everything he can to avoid accountability and responsibility for anything. Leaving it up to the individual counties and individual mayors allows him to stay on the island of it wasn't my fault. That way, when the mayors and the the county persons uh, put some uh, put an ordinance in act, and it goes wrong, he can clearly say it wasn't me. He left. He's leaving everything up to everybody's doing everything, man. Everybody's doing their own thing, and this is what it equates to. And I know this is the opening of the show, and I shouldn't be going all the way in right now, but damn it, I'm a little fired up. This is what it equates no, to, go for Jake. It. it equates to a whole lot of spinning cogs, individual spinning cogs. The purpose of a cog is to work with other cogs. So if you have a cog there just spinning by itself, it ain't doing fuck all nothing but spinning until it's connected with another cog that's connected to another cog that is then connected to another cog, then you have what we call a moving system. What we're doing here in the state of Arizona is in regards to the coronavirus uh, mitigation efforts is everybody is their own spinning cog. No one's working together. No one has any clue what they should be doing. And the main driving shaft between that's that support that's supposed to support all these cogs is not spinning. And that is our governor. That's how I roll up and, 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 and bring all of this coronavirus mitigation in the state of Arizona to, to, to the way that my head can, can grasp it and understand it. Everybody is a spinning cog not connected scottsdale's doing what they want to do peoria is doing what they want to do pima county's doing what they want to do maricopa county's doing what they're on to do and you know what here's the thought process jake i wonder what it would be like if we had some some person that was over all of these jurisdictions that was over all of these counties all of these mayoral offices that could give them some directions and parameters to work into even if it's the wrong parameters at least we'd all be doing it at the same time time oh wait there is something like that it's called the office of the fucking governor and he's not doing anything he's so fucking scared to make a mistake it's costing people's lives all right that's a good place to start the show i'd say five six fucking eight <laughs> What is up, boyos? 
This is the Jake and Corey podcast. I'm Jake. That's Corey. What's up, Corey? I'm still pissed off. I know that we've had like 30 seconds to take a <laughs> breath from that fucking rant. I'm still pissed off. I'm an angry, fat black guy right now. And the only person that I could yell at is my adorable, white, long-haired, pasty, skinned friend, Jake. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> oh, man. I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you, Jake? Nobody, I never ask you that. How are you? You know, I'm doing all right. I, um, I'm actually, I, t- I decided, you know, it's time, it's time to take a break. It's time to go on vacation. But, you know, in the time of the Rona. Uh, taking a vacation is a bit of a risk. So um, I just went up north um, in Phoenix. There's a place called Sedona, which is a bunch of red rock and stuff. And uh, just sitting up here in a cabin. I haven't really left the cabin much. Just brought my bass, playing, the, playing my bass in, in the wilderness. It's been, it's been very nice. Um, I, I wanted to talk about this a little bit on the show, but we can keep uh, dissing on, on Doug Ducey a bit first. It's not even but, a diss, um, but you know what? Yeah, you're right. Uh, traveling amongst Corona is, uh, is a bit of risk, but you went to a place that's like, I believe, one of the lowest risk places right now because it's so spread out and where you are, you're not amongst a lot of other people, you know, and you're out there with nature. And the last time I checked, Bambi can't get Corona. So you'll be yeah. okay. Just, you know, just be careful with Thumper. You know, he gets around. Yeah, yeah. No, we we haven't. Uh, I'm here with my my family, obviously, but um, I yeah, we haven't like seen anybody. You know, we've just been chilling in the cabin, going on walks. Um, it yeah, sounds it's been nice. nice. But while I've been up here, another thing I've been taking a break from is um, social media, and it was an unintentional break from social media. Just happens that up in this cabin, I have absolutely no, no service, and uh, there's no internet here. So I've just kind of been. Uh, taking a, a nice little detox from Facebook and um, realized I really don't give a shit about any of that stuff. <laughs> and life just moves on, you know, without it, just fine. Um, and I think that it's certainly... It, it, I think, it, not to cut you off, Jake, I think it might be, you know, no, no, uh, just warranted, you know, housekeeping notes here that, yeah, Jake is definitely coming from, uh, recorded the show from a seriously remote location yeah. normally we do the show remotely but jake took remote and literally redefined it and um i'm yeah. looking at an image from him that's coming to me like it looks like you know when we find one of those asteroids out on the end of the universe you know that's how jake <laughs> looks coming back to me um so he's literally taken the word remote and went seriously remote and while he's recording the show in order for his microphone and whatever thing he's doing to communicate to the internet has power he keeps having to churn this little thing next to him to create a- electricity um and what <laughs> yeah. i can only assume is behind him is an electricity creating um uh, stationary bike that he also is yeah. probably going to jump onto um the second half of the show when i really start getting ramped up <laughs> i I may also sound like like uh, I, I shouldn't sound bad, no. but I, I probably don't sound as good because um, I didn't bring my like nice mic. I'm just using a a simple microphone. Um, but you know, I just and the only way I can get you, like I said, I have no internet up here. So my sister has Verizon, which works, but I have Sprint. Uh, fuck you, Sprint. Yeah, that, Sprint does not Sprint. Well. Talk about a talk about an oxymoron name for a company. A Sprint that can't even walk. <laughs> it's true uh, it works fine in the city though but uh not in the city so i'm using my sister's hotspot to talk to you which is uh it works but um it is working you know i i've real i've realized um not having social media is kind of nice i will say it's nice to be able to like you know just message you out of the blue on facebook messenger and stuff and but i don't miss like the the, the media feeds i don't miss like twitter I, I don't miss any of it man i'm honestly I rarely use it anyway. Let I me, usually use it as a way to just kill time at this point. But let me ask you this. Would you miss it if you had nothing else to do? You're up in a beautiful you're up in what we call the high country in the state of Arizona. If you were in the city and you had nothing to do and you couldn't go anywhere and the only outlet that you had to reach out to would be social media, do you think that your feeling would be a little different? Because of the fact that you're in that beautiful high country, there's things to see, there's smells, 
and there's sights and there's different noises and there's things to distract you. If you didn't have that to distract you, would your social media blackout be as enjoyable as you're painting it to be? I think the internet would be rough just because everything is internet now, like including like Netflix and, you know, your streaming services. So like I'd miss watching movies, but you know, I'd, I'd find a way around that. I'd go buy some Blu-rays or something. Um, I'd probably be more productive, honestly. I'd stop watching so much YouTube and maybe, you know, read a book <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> so you practice my instrument, so which I've neglected for so in, long. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got caught, you know, playing and playing with your instrument in band. The, um, <laughs> the, the, uh, but you are, so you're saying you're enjoying the fact that you haven't been connected socially on social media, not just the internet, just social oh. media social media definitely like i if it weren't for me being a person who's been in bands so often and and also this show and loner cast and all that i I probably would disconnect entirely from social media and just rock the discord you know just talk to friends through discord and because like dude facebook is so toxic and then twitter is toxic on a different way it's weird that these things that are honestly identical they're all just email um i have like (laughs) at the root of everything it is just email you're right they're they're all email and message boards like but like it's weird how they have different sort of uh uh you know cultures i would say yeah like like face facebook has like that weird conspiracy theory culture and then twitter is a lot of celebrities arguing with people and then Instagram is just half naked people, which I'm okay. I'm I'm okay with Instagram just because it is just half naked people. I think Instagram is so. more about uh, my fake life. Um, I think Inst- yeah. Instagram yeah. is just people's way of painting a picture of what they wish reality was. Um, in my which opinion, I think that's what that's what Facebook like used to be until Facebook turned into like a meme sharing website out of nowhere. And Instagram kind of took over as like the white picket fence sort of page, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't I, know. I, I just, I hate the, the toxicity of some of those, um, you know, social medias, but it's been really nice. Just, I haven't even thought twice about it. I, I have things to do. I brought my, my Game Boy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that, you haven't you been know. on social media, then you've missed all of the, uh, um, half naked pictures that I posted of myself up on my Instagram. Page. Um, and I have been I have been able to keep up with some stuff like the Doug Ducey stuff. I was able to kind of Jesus to why grab would you? and why, watch why, some of that. Why? It, it, he, uh, he, you, you know, if you wanted to, I could have summed up everything about that press conference by um, just showing uh, one of those one of those finger spinners and just spinning it for you. I mean, <laughs> I want it to literally, Jake, go down to the Arizona State Capitol and present him with a dodgeball championship award because dude has the ability to dodge questions like no tomorrow. I mean, he should be on 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 team. Uh, what was the bad team in dodgeball? The movie he should he should be on that effing team. Uh, the purple like cobra or yeah the purple cobras he should I love that movie by the way <laughs> i do too he should be on the effing purple cobras because home dude knows how to avoid the question five different people can ask his ass the same question in different ways and he can he he has the ability to manipulate it he is a person that you would call educatedly stupid he is smart enough to make you think he's stupid. And people are That's true. People are lapping it up. When you look at it from face value, you think that he's out there just empowering to, uh, empowering the counties to do what they want to do to to flatten the curve of the coronavirus. He couldn't even answer um why we haven't seen him in 20 effing days. 
I could, he could have easily, the answer to that is because he was sucking the teat of the establishment. What, what has happened in the last 20 days? The election. Of course yep. he wasn't, he didn't want to be seen because he knew that people were going to put his back up against the wall, especially when all of the, the, the three lawsuits started coming through and the Trump administration claiming voter fraud in the state of Arizona. Of course they were going to come after him for that. And the, the his this weak willed zilch of a governor that we have here didn't want to face it because he knew it was bullshit from the beginning. And then when he finally did do the press conference on last Wednesday, they asked him about, you know, what are you going to what? How do you feel about the? And of course, just whew, dodge. The dude knows how to dodge like a summer -ma monkey. I'm telling you, it's ridiculous. He is the king of dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's sickening. It's it's sad, uh, but you know it it trickles down and it it kind of happens within that party. Um, you know it stops it starts all the way at the top. I mean Trump did the same thing. He's like, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to leave it up to the governors. And then a lot of the Republican governors have been, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to leave it up to the mayors. And yeah. then the mayors are are like, what am I going to do? I'm going to leave it up to the people. And it's like. Mm we elected you to make these kind of decisions. Exactly. You know? like in crisis. Elect, that's why we ele elected you. Yeah. In crisis, this is where you step up and you do it. I, I have one question for Governor Doug Ducey. Would you rather have a few pissed off alive people or stacks of thousands of dead Arizonans? Yeah, exactly. That's the question. Exactly. Because El Paso just ordered uh, refrigerated morgue trucks. Because they're stacking bodies on top of bodies right now. So yeah. I, un I understand the argument of both people. I understand the argument of people that don't want the state shut down. I understand the argument of people that are small businesses that depend on foot traffic in order to stay afloat. I understand those two things. But we're dealing with something that is, ne that is unworldly that we've never dealt with before. And what we all need to come to grips with is that we're all gonna have to do shit right now that is going to make us uncomfortable. And that uncomfortableness yeah. can be temporary or it can be permanent. One or the other, we have put too much stock in our local governments and our federal governments to the point where now when we need to cash in that stock, it's not paying off. We have put too much. We keep running to the federal government hoping to bail us out. Those fuckers are on vacation while our grandmothers and our d fathers and our mothers are dying in the streets. And they're on fucking it's, vacation? It's very true. It's it's like um you know, they're happy to make executive orders on like dropping bombs on people and, and you know, sending air uh, airstrikes to get more money. Uh, you know, funding a war that has killed more civilians than soldiers. They're happy to do that stuff. But then as soon as it's like, hey, uh, can you give us some money so we can like support ourselves during a global pandemic? Uh, they're like, N no, I think maybe you should just like try and make it on your own and leave your businesses open during a global pandemic. I mean, it, we, we saw it work in New Zealand where they, they just shut everything down and they paid their people so they could, uh, you know, continue to have uh their businesses even though they were shut down we could have done the same thing here shut down air travel or whatever and you know and we could have and as a, a global superpower we could have worked together with other global superpowers to try and eradicate it but instead we've had monkey man in in the uh white house just sort of you know dancing around with his symbols you know just making a lot of noise not doing anything um, and then, you know, his backers standing there supporting it while he's doing absolutely nothing, saying that he's the savior. Well, you know, 300,000 people have died and counting, you know, like, and it's just rising. We haven't had three waves of Corona. We've had one wave with spikes, with huge spikes. You yeah. know, it's been one steady incline. We haven't had like a solid decline in coronavirus. It's been there the whole time and we've done nothing about it. And 
it, it really starts up at the top, you know? You can blame Doug Ducey, which I will, happily, but, you know, who's above him, you know? And it all comes back to that. And so. it's not so much about... But I, I will say, yeah, to just to give Doug Ducey a little bit of credit, he did say masks work, and... I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate mm-hmm. him actually saying masks work. You and know, you know what? On which... my on my grandmother's house, a screen door works for her, but it doesn't work for <laughs> a, a fucking submarine. So you can tell me that something works, but if you're not sure. mandating what works for everybody, it means nothing. And you can't fucking do something as as simple as saying that the state of arizona is under a mask mandate it's a piece of fabric that goes in front of your mouth and your nose you're gonna leave it up to the mayors and you know why he's leaving it up to the mayors and 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 the county leaders county supervisors is because he doesn't want the people that don't want to wear masks knocking on his door you know what I noticed about about uh, governor ducey on that on that press conference on wednesday that son of a bitch look really well rested. No bags under his eyes. No dark circles. He look. He didn't look stressed. He didn't have that bead of sweat he always gets on his upper lip. The motherfucker looked too damn rested to be dealing with the fact that bodies are stacking up in morgues across this state. Dude should look like hell has dragged him through their fury. He should look like he is losing every moment of sleep behind this. He looks well rested. He looked at perfectly quaffed. That's not the sign of someone that's out there leading to protect the lives of people that hired him and entrusted him to do so. You know, you know who didn't look well rested though? Did you watch? The press conference held by uh, Rudy Giuliani that I, happened over the course of the week. I will say this in the words of um, one of my favorite movies, The Wizard of Oz, The Wicked Witch of the West. I'm melting, melting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That guy knows. That guy knows he's full of shit, too. What a And disaster. he just continues to do it. What a fucking the man, disaster. Joke. A joke after a joke after a joke. Well, first of all, they all walk into this press conference. You know, 20 lawyers or however many there were. There was probably, I don't know, there was probably seven of them. And they all walk in. None of them wearing masks. They all just barge in there. Um, and it's Rudy Giuliani and the Karens. That's what I like to call them. Um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> up not, up next at the Night of the Roxbury, Rudy Giuliani and the Karens, the sing for you. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they Jesus. walk up there. Rudy Giuliani is he's talking through his ass. He's saying there's so much fraud. We've never seen so much fraud. Even though earlier in the week he went into court and said, "Well, we're not claiming that there's fraud." <laughs> And <laughs> he's a mirror of his the judge. He's, he's a, they always say, you know, Geppetto, when he made Pinocchio, Pinocchio was a mirror image of his puppeteer. Giuliani is the same thing. He's a mirror of his puppeteer. Well, Giuliani, you know, he's just a paid lawyer doing his thing, doing the lawyer thing. But he's up there. He knows he's lying. Uh, he knows that this is going to ruin his reputation forever, and he's up there sweating like a madman, so much so that his hair dye, his hair dye is dripping down his cheeks. This man has hair dye dripping I'm down melting, his cheeks. melting, melting, oh, what a cruel world. He's he's taking uh, questions, and every time he takes a question, he's like, uh, which fake media source are you from? Uh, and it's just like, dude, come on, just like... You guys sound like children, like just speak. And then there was one lady there who he took a question. He's like, which fake media source are you from? And she's like, uh, I'm independent. Um, I have no one above me and I have no reason to lie at all. So what, what's, uh, what's the deal here? Um, he, yeah, he, it, it was great. I didn't, I didn't watch it. I actually saw the pictures on late on the late, late show with James Corden. Um, okay. That I saw the pictures on, on his show and I'm like, oh my gosh, what a disaster. I mean, dude, yeah, you did, know he just lit- did he literally just get the dye job the couple hours before he did the press conference? I mean, what? And it wasn't a good dye job either. And you know what was gross? He kept wiping up his sweat and then like rubbing his mouth 
It was so nasty, dude. Rudy Giuliani is just a nasty, nasty little man. Of course he is. Uh, <laughs> he likes to he likes to prey on little uh, little girls in the Borat movie. That showed yeah, a lot that, of uh, who he really is. Yeah, that that nine uh, eleven glow is really wearing off on old Rudy Giuliani. I mean, I had uh, so much respect for that dude back when nine eleven happened and how he handled the state of New York, and he was pretty much like a a. a and that was one thing that I know James Corden is, you know, just a late night like, talk host. But what happened to this guy? This guy was a national treasure at one point. I mean, is the Trump bucks that good? What did he really do, though? Yeah. <laughs> not to be, not to be a jerk, but like, what did he really do that someone else in his position wouldn't have done? To me, it almost seems like, and, and you know, not to make light of what happened, but you know, right. it's almost like right, right place, right time for Rudy Giuliani. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I can if see that, it that didn't way happen, too. If that didn't happen, no one would remember that guy. Although there are arguments to be made that he, like, quote unquote, cleaned up New York or whatever, but um, I don't know, man. Not according to Rick Moranis, he hasn't. Oh yeah, yeah, because Rick Moranis was just walking down the street and got beat up. Well, yeah, you times are a mean? little different now. <laughs> in, in the time of Corona, times are a little different. The violence has certainly skyrocketed. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Uh. It's a, and then, it's a like, sad thing, but it's also very indicative of this whole shit show. Every court case it's, brought on by it's the Trump sad, administration is, is just literally just being thrown out. To me, I, I find the whole circus of it all very, very funny, and I'm actually quite enjoying it because nothing's going to happen. Um, the saddest part, though, to me, is just that people are buying into it. Um, and and ultimately, this is gonna, at least I think, this is gonna like destroy the Republican Party for a while, because now they're just split down the middle. Because I know a lot of people who are Republican who are very much like, yeah, he lost. That is what it is, you know. And then there's another half that are on the whole Trump thing, and it's just, it's just bizarre. It's it's a really, we've never seen anything like this. One of our local uh, but news outlets. Ultimately, it's hilarious. One of our uh, one of our local news outlets was down at the um, uh, I want to say county assessor's office, but that's probably not correct. But anyway, where they were getting ready to certify the votes for Maricopa County, and uh, there was a group, a very small group of Trump supporters, maybe ten, fifteen people that were out there. And while she was reporting, you could overhear someone on a loudspeaker behind her speaking to the Trump supporters, stating that. You know, um, the fraud in the election was trumped up from the depths of hell. And she really just sound like one of those religious zealots that were trying to spin this as some evil supernatural happenstance on how Trump lost the election. And I'm just listening to this and you're seeing the people, you know, the, the five of tens of people that are standing out there just lapping it up like a dog drinking water uh, with their, you know, their American flags tied around their neck and their Trump flags tied around their neck and their, uh, their uh, 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 weapons around their shoulder. I don't, I don't get it. There's one dude that shows up at every last one of these things and he has the world's biggest gun around his neck. I've seen him out in front of the voting office when the news was there. I saw him in front of the pickets when they moved the pickets across the street from the voters office. I've now and now he's downtown Phoenix uh, where they were certifying the votes, which, by the way, Air, uh, uh, Maricopa County did certify their votes. And um, hopefully that's a done deal. You know, uh, I just don't get the 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 segment of people that are just this is never like it's either they won or it's wrong i don't i don't i don't think i've ever experienced that in the history of an election where it's like this and jake you're right um nothing is happening but something is happening because now what we don't realize is we're sitting here focused on this orange this orange baboon not real not he doesn't have to concede but at least what he needs to do is he needs to start the transition of power president-elect biden needs to right. have those security briefings 
And 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 I'm not surprised that Trump isn't releasing the security briefings because Trump didn't even go to the security briefing meetings when the Obama administration set them up for him when he was elected. Yeah, well, it, that's been a a really big issue because Joe Biden wants to start planning his you know uh, coronavirus task force and stuff, but uh, Trump is not working with him. So he can't get like, you know, the insider information, you know, that the rest of us don't have. And I don't know. I don't know if people understand what that is. So let me equate it in layman's terms. It's the equivalent of you resigning from your job and you give your two week notice. And in that two weeks, they bring on your replacement and you decide to delete all of your emails. You decide to delete all of the files that you've been working on for the last four years. And then you leave your position. You're setting the person that's coming in up after you. You're setting the setting them up to fail instead of being an adult and saying, OK, I'm leaving my role. So I'm going to leave the framework. For this new person to come in. So that's how that people don't understand how this is affecting this country. But it is Biden is going to end up going into that office behind the eight ball he's going in with a manufactured a manufactured um um dis, dis, disability it's not it's not brought on by him and that's just going to give those super deep trump supporters the power to step up and say oh look biden's been in office for such and such amount of time and he hasn't done shit not realizing that biden got in there behind the eight ball and he's going to have to play catch up yeah, I th- I think fortunately though, like you know, most of the scientists and other countries are on Biden's side, so he could probably hit a lot of them up for a lot of information. But like, it'd be very nice if our current administration would work with the next administration and just make it seamless for him. So then, yeah, he's not scrambling to figure out what he's gonna do. It's it's really messed up. I, I also find it interesting. Um, y- you were talking about. You know, it, it, people talking about how he's evil on the other side, that he's, you know, some sort of antichrist. I just find it very funny that the evangelicals and a lot of Christian people have have turned to Trump, even though that man, I've never seen him go into church. I've never heard him, besides that one time it started a riot. Um, yeah. I've never heard him talk about the Bible uh, or anything. where where Joe Biden has been a practicing Catholic for his entire life. Uh, he also hasn't, you know, slept with, you know, porn stars and, you know, he hasn't been married multiple times. He's been married one time. This man is a, a, and you know, I don't care about this stuff, but like, you know, the people that do care about this stuff are the ones that are rooting for Trump. And it's just totally bizarre to me. It makes no sense at all. It's so interesting, Jake, that you bring that up as well, because, the I I find it such a, a a conflict where these evangelical evangelicals like Paula White was that one that was trending about the you know praying for angels to come from Africa to help Trump win the rele- the the uh help Trump win uh, reelection. Here's what's interesting, and I had this thought, and I, and it just came back to my mind. Isn't it odd how? The churches want to be on the forefront of showing their support behind a political party. But the moment that any level of government reaches into their church or their organization, they stand on the 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 saying of church, uh, church and state, uh, uh, the separation of church and state. If the government started saying that you're going to lose your nonprofit statuses and all this other shit, I wonder how they'd what they how they'd feel about praying for these politicians then. True. You know what I'm saying? We, what if the tables were fucking turned on them? And Jake, you know that I, I I'm not a religious person, but I'm a faith-based person. It irritates me when I even see my own pastor 
standing up in front of the church. And he does it in a jokingly way, and he tries to go lighthearted about it. But he has clearly shown his political stance in his hand. I don't think I don't find that acceptable because if the government stood up and decided to regulate what some of these churches are doing, especially some of these mega churches, you'd be screaming separation of church and state. But then yet when you want to say something about the government, it's completely okay with you to do that. You can't have it both fucking ways, churches and evangelical leaders. You can't have it the same. You can't have you can't have your cake and eat it too. So if you can say something about a political figure or you can put your support behind a political figure, when that political figure or that political group decides to come back and change something in your church, you should have to suck it up and fucking deal with it. I yeah. No, I, I agree 100%. I think like um, a lot of people have issues trying to do something that will affect them a little bit negatively, but in the grand scheme will help the society that they live in. You know, one of the, one of the examples is, you know, and this has affected churches uh, pretty heavily, I'd imagine, you know, are, are the lockdowns, right? So I imagine that's why a lot of churches are going Trump, because... It has nothing to do with Trump being a faith-based person. It has to do with Trump wanting to leave things open and Biden wants to close things down. But, you know, I, I'm not a religious or a faith-based person, but I, I know enough to know that the, the Bible says, love thy neighbor. And what is more loving of thy neighbor than not spreading the goddamn coronavirus? You know what I mean? Very true. Um, and some churches you know, have found a way to survive. My churches won when they when we were under that big lockdown where the churches weren't able to have any assembly. Our, my church didn't lose any employees. They were able to make they were able to make their budgets every month because they have people that that the the, the people that attend the, uh, the church and support the church continue to do so even in the midst of the coronavirus. You know what I mean? So there are ways to work around that. But I don't what I don't appreciate is the churches and the evangelicals that want to get up and clearly make a statement politically. But when politics makes a statement about the church, it then becomes an argument of church versus state or a separation of church and state. It's a double standard. It's a double standard. And it just doesn't have anything to just all do with Trump. It's just a fucking double standard. And you got to and you got to well, think about people that are outside of the church looking in on this. How many people do you think are going to now go to Paula White's ministries and say, yeah, I want to know Jesus because she prayed for angels from Africa to come and help Trump get reelected. It's just bizarre. Dude, a lot of that stuff is just bizarre. I don't, Jeez. you know, seeing someone talk in tongues is just bizarre as well. <laughs> well, we're on the topic, but you know, while we're on the topic of, um, of, of churches and stuff, you know, we've got a couple big holidays coming up and, and, and it makes me wonder, you know, are we going to see substantial spikes? You know, Thanksgiving is coming up this week. Um, it's the Monday before Thanksgiving right now. And I'm curious what the, what the spike is going to be. I, I imagine it'll be a decent spike in coronavirus cases due to Thanksgiving, but probably not that much i think a lot of people are smart enough to just be like okay i'll just make turkey at home or whatever <laughs> stay home dude well just, the spike that we're dealing yeah. with right now i believe is something that uh scientists predicted back i want to say early september um it's not the fact that we are so much gathered more even though we are more gathered it goes to the fact that they were talking about this. I want to say, well, and everyone has to be inside, right? Yeah. yeah. And I want to say that, um, this is the point that one scientist made, and I can't remember where he was from said that there are more people that have the coronavirus that haven't gotten tested that, that have it. And what's happening is that right now in Arizona, and I can only speak to Arizona, the numbers that we're seeing now are people that have had it probably have been asymptomatic and went to get tested because they wanted to, they want to congregate for Thanksgiving. So there's more people going in to get tested and we're starting to un uncover that, that, that um, segment of people that weren't, that didn't feel a need to go get tested that actually had it, that people were, that the scientists were talking about in early part of September. Where they think that yep. even though Arizona is reporting uh, 236,000 
there are actually some scientists are projecting that there's actually more than a million active coronavirus cases in Arizona because it's only a small segment of people that are actually going to get tested. Because people see that the holidays are coming up and they want to um, congregate and a lot of colleges are requiring students to get tested before they leave campus, we're starting to uncover some of those people that have that have this thing that didn't get tested before. And that's where these numbers well, are I, coming from, because people want to be able to get together. The fucked up thing is, is that these dumb motherfuckers are still going to get they're going to get tested. They're going to get a positive note back. They're going to say, I'm feeling fine. They're going to wear a mask. They're going to go to their family. They're going to laugh or or something before they put a bite of food in their mouth. And then before you know it, we've got the coronavirus circling in the air for the next 45 minutes in that room. And hopefully it doesn't hit an intake an air intake and then now it's circulating throughout the whole house and that one giggle just put that entire family at risk and god forbid that grandma is still inside yeah well i've got a uh, let, let me say this real quick Please. before i went on this vacation i uh got tested and when i get back i'm getting tested again so trying to be as safe as possible with it um but also um on, on the topic of you know vacations and stuff you know, I think a lot of people, and I, I just, we just, me and my, because uh, me and my media family, we've kind of been getting together. We all work together, so it just kind of works out that yeah, way. Yeah, your situation um, is set up perfectly where there's there's very, very low risk of your immediate family. And here's the thing, your immediate Well, and fam- even if we, even if we didn't get together, we'd still pass it to each other because we work together. So it just kind of is what it is. Right. But it's um, not. But your immediate family structure is like perfect for traveling together because, yeah, though you, though you guys don't live together, you guys do work together. So the only risk of you getting it would be at work and you work with the people that are in your family. Yeah. So it's, it's like a win win situation. Exactly. It's a perfect case scenario when you really think about it. Yeah, I kind of lucked out in that situation. But um. You know, we've had to make a couple of tough calls, you know, where aunts and uncles wanted to get together for Thanksgiving and we, you know, and they tried to peer pressure us into, you know, doing it. And we're like, no, we don't, we don't feel comfortable with it, Smart. you know? And I, I, well, yeah, but like, you know, I wonder a lot of people who maybe aren't as good at saying no, you know what I mean? Even if they are feeling like I want to say no, but I can't say no. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's this hard, like, it's, peer pressure from family. Well, and stuff. and I, I think maybe Thanksgiving is easier. But once you get to Christmas, that's uh, an even harder one. You know what I mean? Because that's like the big family one. I also wonder, you know, and this is why I was bringing it up, because we were talking about churches. I wonder about churches, you know, that's churches bread and butter. You know, that's how churches make money is by bringing massive crowds in and getting their donations and stuff. And I imagine that's still going to happen at a lot of churches. Um. So I, I just, I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen when we get there. It's, you know what I mean? I, I understand the peer pressure that you speak of with the family trying to, peer, outside family trying to peer pressure you. It's, it's, it's double fold. I mean, it's almost a lose, lose, lose situation um, because you have family trying to peer pressure you into getting together and then you have your own self pressure. Speaking from a single man's perspective here, you have your own internal pressure of saying, fuck, you just want to be around somebody else. Can you start to just weigh the odds? You know what I mean? In your own mind. Well, just this one time. Yeah. You you kind of just say that it's just that. And you know what, Jake? I'm guilty of doing it myself. I'm guilty of it. I had a friend Mm -hmm. that hit me up that says, you know what? Let's hang out. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen you in months. And we talk on the phone and that's about it. But let's just do it. You know, just this one time, you know, let's just hang out. We'll sit on the opposite end. And then it's something in a little voice in the back of my head says that one time can be that one fatal flaw. And then I and then I. So I I understand the peer pressure here. I am. I'm staring down the barrel of the peer pressure as well. I have my kid who is off at college who wants to come home for Thanksgiving and he can't. So he's going with his mother, you know, it's not the ideal situation. And then his mother has reached out and said, Hey, do you want to just join us for Thanksgiving? We'll all get tested to make sure that you feel safe. And you know, they're trying to make, and you, do you know how gut wrenchingly heartbreaking it is for me to have to say no 
even though they're trying to make our, all of those protocols and they're trying to do everything that they can. One side of me says, yes, go, go, go. The other side of me says, no, don't go, go, go. And then you know what it came down to, Jake? It came down to the simple, me just simply saying, it's one holiday season. It's one holiday season. I've had lots of holiday seasons before this. There will be a few holiday seasons after this. The 2020 holiday season, I'm just going to have to suck it up and sit it out. That's lit and it hurts to make that decision, but it's the best possible case scenario right now. It's one I, holiday season. And who's to say that the vaccine doesn't come out and everybody is getting vaccinated by March or April of next year. And then you know what? We can have a redo Christmas. We can have a redo Thanksgiving. That's the way that I'm having to look at it. It sucks yeah. to be a single person shut down in their home. Nothing that they can do. Nothing, nowhere that you can go. You, you want to, but you know you shouldn't. You want to, but you know you shouldn't. And it fucking hurts. It hurts. It's breaking. It's mind fucking, but it has to be done. And it's one holiday season to sacrifice. One sacrificial yeah. holiday season for the well-being of my family and my own well-being. Yeah, it's it's also interesting, you know, with uh, Christmas and, and New Year's being so close together. I think for a lot of young people, it's pretty easy to be like, nah, I think I'll skip out on, on Christmas, you know. Um, but then, you know, because Christmas, I'd say, is kind of older people and like the really little littles. Yeah. Um, but, we're, but, then, but, but New uh, Year's is going to go back to what I said months ago, yeah. Jake, when this shit started. We made the biggest mistake by telling the young people that this doesn't kill them. Yeah, and then the, the week later, we've got all the young people, college kids, you know, 20-somethings, thinking like, oh, well, let's, we haven't partied all year. Let's do a big blowout party for New Year's. And of course... I can't think of a better way to spread the coronavirus. Oh, at a, yeah. You know, college party in a small, you know, apartment. You All know, it takes is kissing each other. One person kissing each other at, at midnight or whatever. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little torn on it. Well, I'm not torn on it, but, you know, I'm a little heartbroken because I love having my New Year's party and stuff. Same with Halloween. I love having the Halloween parties and I kind of had to skip out on that as well. Yeah, it and sucks. I want to be with my family for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I want to be with my kids for Christmas. I want to do all of that. Don't get me wrong. I want to do all of that. I want to go back to work. I want to be able to do what what my life has, what my life work has been. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to sit across the radio console and do this show like we started it. I want to be able to fucking do all of that. But I'm going to have to do things right now. And this is what a lot of people need to understand. You're going to have to do something that's going to be uncomfortable for the benefit of tomorrow. Do be uncomfortable today for the benefit of tomorrow. That's the whole thing. And, and, and none of the leaders want, want to even project that. They don't even want to, they don't want to, they don't, they don't want to own that. I say, Corey, I say we do a Zoom Christmas. Me and you, we'll open up some presents together. I'll, I'll Amazon ship you a present. And we'll, we'll open them on. That's how it's I'm doing Thanksgiving. I'm going to be Zoom Thanksgiving. I had my, my kids' mom send me what their menu is. I'm going to prepare the same exact food at my house. <laughs> nice. And we're going to uh, Zoom Thanksgiving. And uh, when they sit down to eat, they'll be uh, on their iPad, and I'll be on my iPad. And that's the way that, it, that's the way that we're going to do it. And we'll do the same thing for Christmas, Jake. I will, I will Amazon ship you a gift and... and um, uh, uh, let's both wake up early Christmas morning and you be in your PJs and I'll be in my PJs or a Speedo, whatever it is I feel comfortable with. And we'll open up our gifts together. We'll have some hot chocolate and uh, <laughs> we'll each grab each other's uh, laptops and hold them close and coo. Yeah. <laughs> At, uh, at midnight on New Year's, we'll kiss our cameras. We'll yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll kiss our cameras, and then I'll have to turn my camera off for a few minutes because there's a good chance that I'll be crying. <laughs> oh, oh, crying. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I thought you were gonna say something else. No, huh? crying. I, I will definitely <laughs> just you know the loneliness will subside itself. But fuck all. You're gonna say. You know it's November. I just thought about this. Um, 
And usually in November, you know, there's no shave November. And of course, uh, no nut November. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm winning no <laughs> nut November right now. Um, I wasn't even playing, but I'm winning. I just completely forgot about it because it seems uh, wholly unimportant this year, doesn't it? All of that stuff. <laughs> well, you know what? I've been I've like, been celebrating no nut November <laughs> since August. So you're telling me you're telling me I can't go outside and I can't bust a nut? <laughs> Come on, now. that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's too much man, man it, d- look it's uh, it, it's it, people think that you know i i get i get hate on well not hate but i get vocal people on social media coming after me on on the way that i you know come after our political leaders and stuff like that here's the thing i'm not doing it because they're political leaders i'm doing it because they're fucking leaders it's the same thing that I would do on my numbers job. If my leader is failing at their job and it's affecting my ability to do what I need to do, then they need to be called to the to the table. You know what I'm saying? We put these motherfuckers in these offices politically and they need to be called to the table to do things. And it goes back to that old saying of the the the, the late senator. You have to get into good trouble. Sometimes you have to own up and you're going to have to shake up the establishment every once in a while. You're going to have to um, take, you know, take leadership by the short hairs. You know what I mean? And 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 let the people cry. Let the some of the people bitch and let the some of the people moan. But here's the thing. They'll be bitching, crying and moaning alive. And if you make a mistake. You, it can always be fixed. It's not a mistake if you it's only a mistake if you keep making it. But we're not our political leaders aren't even giving themselves a chance to even make a mistake in this coronavirus thing. They're afraid to make a mistake when you're trying to protect somebody. You have there are going to be mistakes as a parent. Everything that I've done to protect my my child has not been perfect. I've made mistakes. I've made good mistakes and I've made bad mistakes, but that little shit is still breathing, ain't he? He's still eating. You know, he's still hitting me up for hundred dollar sneakers. <laughs> so I made some yeah, mistakes I mean, and our leaderships, our lead, our political leaders in this hour, in this coronavirus thing need to make mistakes. If mandating mask is a mistake, then make the fucking mistake and then correct it. Therefore it goes from being a mistake to be in a process. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, we haven't, we can't well, get to the process because we can't make, we were afraid to make a mistake. Yeah. And to your point about, you know, people being mad at you about, you know, not liking our leaders or whatever, our political leaders that is. And, um, you know, I've gotten the same sort of flack both online and from, you know, family, friends, whatever. Um, Democracy doesn't work without us getting involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and as much as you know, Trump would hate me saying this, democracy doesn't work without journalism either. It doesn't work without someone in there with you know, the checks and balances. And it's our, it's, it is our duty to make sure that journalism is correct. You know, it's the people to check the sources and all that stuff. It's, it's our duty to do that. But, yeah. you know... Journalism is important, and the fact that Trump and the Trump administration and the Republican Party are very much playing up the fact that media is fake and all of it is fake and shouldn't trust it. You should trust us, though. A bunch of lawyers. Most politicians are lawyers, and now we're meant to trust these guys. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> it just doesn't make any goddamn sense. So, you know, uh, that's, that, that's, uh, that's my two cents on that. It, it's so it, it, look i know that people don't listen to you know just having um a political argument i'm not i'm not talking about at this point we're eight months into this thing i don't give a shit what political party you're a part of i'm just looking for that one person to stand the fuck up I'm looking for that one person that's going to understand that you're going to make a mandate. You're going to put some, you're going to make some people uncomfortable. And if at the end of the day, you have a group of people that are uncomfortably alive, I call that a win. But at this point, we have no one 
that is willing to even get uncomfortable. There is no leader, be it a governor, anybody at the top that is willing to get into good trouble, that is willing to upset the establishment. We are dealing with this coronavirus that is ungodly. Some would even call it from the pits of hell. So you're going to have to do something that's going to be unconventional. You're going to have to do something that's going to hurt. In order for a child to learn how to ride a bike and be successful at riding a bike. And do you let's take Tony Hawk, Tony Hawk, the world's greatest skateboarder. Do you think he became the great, the greatest skateboarder because he has perfect knees? No, I would imagine if we pulled down Tony Hawk's pants, we would see scrapes and bruises and cuts from years and years of him falling down. But him falling down was good trouble because it led him to the level of greatness he is now. Happy accidents. Happy accidents. Um, yeah. Uh, well... While we're wrapping this up, I want to. I wanted to put this out there. Yeah, uh, I've never put this out there on this show. Oh my God, you're going to confess other... your love for me. Well, I've done that before, plenty of times. That's and true. You know it to be true. Yeah. Search your feelings. To quote <laughs> Star Wars. Um, <laughs> Search your feelings. Um, on on our other show, the Jake. Uh, this is the Jake and Court. On our other show, the Loner Gamecast, we do a a question segment. And, you know, uh, if anyone wants to just throw in some questions, the best way to do it is to just put it in the comments. Put questions, even if there's like topics you'd like to hear us talk about, go ahead and put it in, in the comments of the YouTube. So if you're listening to us on, um, on like Spotify or something, feel free to just go over to YouTube and leave a comment if you want. Also subscribe. Um, also, we have a new show that just launched um, called the Rom-Com Show, where we just talked about rom-coms. Uh, definitely check that out. It's a lot of fun to make. Plan on making more. Um, also check out the um, the Loner Gamecast, which I mentioned earlier. Check out Fat Guy Radio Show. Uh, Corey, do you have anything else to add? I'm on Twitch now. Uh, Jake's turned me into a streamer. So if you want to see someone butcher a video game, I'm your man. Twitch.tv forward slash Fat Guy Radio Show. I'm there. Um, and taking any pointers and I need to get my subscribers up. So, um, the funny thing is the fat guy radio show fan base is like Twitch. Eh, we're above that, but I know that there's people out there that aren't. So come join, come join me on Twitch. <laughs> if you want, I'm butchering games. I'm cussing. I'm melting down. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of fun, good, uh, content. And when it all goes to hell, I will blame Jake because he's the one that forced me to get into this thing. And Jake, <laughs> I can't, I can't get my new fucking Bluetooth headphones to pair with my focus, my focus, right? Started I, I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if that's uh, possible, but we can talk about that later. Okay. That you, that Jay. reminded me, I also stream on Twitch. I've been playing a lot of Tetris Effect lately. Come on and check me out as well. Twitch.tv slash the cast. Often. The hardest game together. ever designed. The It's beautiful, but that game is fucking challenging. Yeah, it's Tetris, man. It's so good. It's for, um, it's for five heads. It's for smart people, not me. <laughs> as if you're spatially aware that's, that's yeah you got to be spatially aware with tetris spatially uh, aware. often that's me good. and cory me and cory have been streaming together that was a lot of fun last week we played uh among us with a bunch of other streamers so that much fun, fun. Well. so much fun and and we'll definitely uh we, we're gonna do it again jake's traveling we would do it this weekend um uh or this past yeah, weekend sure. but yeah we're definitely gonna do it again um but that you are absolutely right it was way more fun than i ever would have imagined it would be so yeah so yeah check it hopefully out, folks. hopefully hopefully next time we play we can try out the other maps too yeah and i hear that there's a new map and we didn't get to it today but also one of the lead twitchers xqc is under suspension from twitch right now everyone's under suspension from twitch man look at They're me with, look at me with the with the twitch knowledge yo <laughs> All right, that's the end of the show. Bye. Five, six, seven. Okay. Ooh.